Right, so in comes the oxidizer. First thing it hits is this catalyst pack. Now that makes it split into steam and oxygen. The oxygen under high temperature hits this rubber and starts it burning. At a couple of thousand degrees, this gas in here is expanding rapidly. As it expands through this nozzle, it gets accelerated to supersonic speeds. So what you end up with is a supersonic plasma going in that direction. Getting maximum power from the rocket isn't as simple as pumping in as much oxidizer as possible. It's critical that the fuel and oxidizer mix in exactly the right proportions. These are gonna be my rockets. I'm gonna use plain air as my oxidizer, and I'm gonna use acetylene as my fuel. Now you might think a stack of fuel, surely that's the best way to go. You might think it's best to have loads of oxidizer and not quite so much fuel, so this one. Or you might want to try a bit of rocket science, which means in my bottle that's about 77 millilitres. My three rockets are now set. They've got their fuel oxidizer ratio. This one stacks of fuel, this one stacks of oxidizer, this one, hopefully, the scientifically correct formula. Time to retire and fire. Three, two, one. Look at that. Just the right amount of fuel oxidizer mix. It is a massive explosion. And that is exactly what you want in a rocket if you're going to get to 1,000 miles an hour. Working out how to achieve this perfect mix has been the main challenge for Daniel's team. Firing up a rocket of this size is seriously dangerous. I guess, sir, uh, we get into these. So it's a real privilege to be taking part in this test. For the Bloodhound rocket, our oxygen source is something called high test peroxide, or HTP. But although it's fairly stable and non-toxic, it still needs to be handled carefully. What we're doing now is sucking the hydrogen peroxide into this tank here. Once it's full, we then seal it off. The next stage, which can only be done once we're clear of the building, is it gets pressurised by those nitrogen cylinders there. Now, the pressure it's pressurised to means there's probably about 50 tonnes of force trying to burst the top and bottom off that tank. After helping Daniel to load the HTP oxidizer, we slowly open the valve. 800 PSI. 800. Perfect. Before retreating to the safety of the monitoring bunker. The rocket's bolted firmly in place. We don't want it flying anywhere in this test. OK, are we ready? To succeed, we want spontaneous ignition. 100% burn in around 10 seconds. Close the vent. Vent is closed. Producing at least 2,000 pounds of thrust. Pressurise the tank. OK, folks, we're about 15 seconds away. Start the countdown. Will Daniel's calculations prove right? Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Valve cracked. Crack more. Fire. 